It all started yesterday lunchtime at school while I was waiting for my friend to use the bathroom. I glanced in the set of mirrors above the sinks to see that I had developed a large pimple, smack bang in the middle of my eyebrows. The lighting was artificial, dingy, and very unflattering, but there was no getting around it. The pimple was big. I'm talking big enough to pick up a satellite. Oh, hadn't it been a little bump this morning when I first noticed it at home? Why had I picked at it? I groaned in irritation, moving very close to the mirror so that my nose was practically touching the glass, examining the pimple, tilting my head to scrutinize my reflected face in the light. I am a 15-year-old girl, and it's not exactly unexpected that I would get the occasional pimple or two, but I was very aware that the next day was school picture day, and I wanted so badly to look nice in my photo that I was extremely distressed to see how noticeable the pimple had become. Now, looking back on this moment less than 24 hours ago, the pimple seems like such a trivial issue compared to the one that has arisen as a result. Later that evening, I stood in front of my bedroom mirror and picked and picked at the pimple until the space between my eyebrows was red and irritated. The pimple only appeared bigger. Oh, I wish you would look good for one day. Is that really too much to ask? I demanded of my reflection. It stared back at me cluelessly, my angry face framing the angry red spot. I stepped back from the mirror, looking in dissatisfaction and annoyance at the mess I'd made of my face. Trying to make the best of the situation, I ran a hairbrush through my hair and practiced the smile that I would use the next day for my picture. All I saw was the pimple protruding from my face, taunting me smugly from where it was stubbornly seated between my eyebrows. I looked hideous, I thought. In a flash of anger and frustration at myself, I threw the wooden hairbrush I was holding at my bedroom mirror. Shattered down the middle, creating cracks that snaked up the left side of the glass. I looked at what I had done in stunned silence, feeling ashamed of my irrational temper tantrum as I surveyed the broken mirror. How was I going to tell my dad that I smashed it? <sighs> what a stupid thing to do. It didn't look like any of the glass had fallen out, and most of the right side of the mirror was fine, but I was cursing myself for behaving so idiotically and rashly over something as shallow and insignificant as a pimple. It was late, though and I was too tired to begin to sort it out then and there. I sighed, turning off the bedroom light and climbing into bed, resolving to offer to pay for a new mirror myself the next day. I didn't lay awake long. My eyes felt like heavy metal shutters, and I drifted almost instantly to sleep. My dreams were fleeting flashes of old fairy tales and stories, dug up from the deepest caverns of my brain that had lay unvisited for years an incoherent storyboard of a tale that my great-grandmother had once told me as a child, about a vain woman who had smashed a mirror. Vague, fuzzy, and disjointed scenes of the woman and her misfortunes danced behind my eyelids. The remembered sound of my great-grandmother's voice swum to the surface of the dream. It's very bad luck to smash a mirror, you know. The minute I woke up this morning, I knew something was wrong. The sound of my alarm pulled me from my dream, but it somehow sounded different, as if I was hearing it from far away, or perhaps underwater. I rolled over, pulling the covers over my head more and nestling into my pillow, trying to ignore the alarm. When I felt a sharp pull in my knees and feet, it pulled me against my will, as though attracted to a magnet out of my bed. My feet placed themselves firmly on the carpeted floor of my bedroom and took a couple steps toward the shattered mirror. I was fully awake now, watching in horror as my legs moved on their own. The pulling in my feet stopped, and I stood still. Something felt different. Not only was I being controlled by some magnetic force, but there was something else. I couldn't place my finger on it, but something was definitely wrong about my bedroom. Then it started to sink in. My bed was pressed up against the wall, but on the right side of the room, when it should have been on the left. The window was above the dressing table, but on the wrong side. The whole room had been flipped and was now the wrong way around. I looked towards the mirror to see that the crack that snaked up the left side in the glass had been reversed. 
so it was now on the right side. In my confusion, I tried to take a step backwards, but my feet were rooted to the floor. Like some invisible force had glued me to the carpet. The more I tried to move, I found that I could not move any part of my body apart from my eyes. I tried to call for my parents, but my mouth wouldn't move. Perhaps I was still dreaming and experiencing some kind of sleep paralysis, but no, I, I, I felt wide awake now. I finally noticed my reflected self, standing in front of the mirror separated from me by the cracks in the glass. Standing in my bedroom. My bedroom as I knew it. Everything on the correct sides. It was like... Like I was seeing the room from the other side of... <laughs> no. That's ridiculous. I looked at my reflection to see that she was wearing the same neutral expression that I could feel my face was glued in. I watched her, willing myself to move when the lips of my reflection begun to curl into a smug sneer, tilting her head slightly to the side. I felt the magnetic pull in my cheeks and neck, forcing me to replicate her movements exactly and simultaneously. couldn't be. Could I really be inside the mirror, forced to reflect the actions of the person on the other side? My reflected self let out a short laugh, very different from my own. The magnetic force opened my mouth to laugh with her, but no sound came out of mine. I only heard hers as if from underwater. It rung out with a sinister echoing quality. How does it feel to be on the other side for a change? My reflection taunted me in a voice like a bad imitation of mine, which somehow sounded breathy and girly, which mine certainly was not. It spoke with a sneering tone that rung with smugness as she looked me up and down. We moved a few steps closer to the mirror simultaneously. I desperately tried to move my feet, but it was no use. I wanted to run, to go back into bed and wake up in my own room, not this bizarre, horrible imitation. My reflection raised a hand magnetic force simultaneously moving my palm to the cool glass so that they were touching. She was totally still for a moment, looking at me coldly, a sneer still playing around the corners of her mouth. Then moved her finger to trace along the crack in the mirror, my finger moving over the sharp, broken glass, her fingertips touching in the process. This cracked mirror will have to be sealed up hissed my mirror self, so quietly it was hardly audible, pouting slightly as she gazed at me, daring me to challenge her. But of course, I could only imitate my grotesque double. I watched her spend 15 minutes getting dressed and putting on makeup, gathering the books that I had laid out on my desk and packing them in my school bag, mechanically replicating every movement on my side of the glass, my mind worrying, hopelessly trying to find a way to get out of this nightmare. When my reflected self was finished in my room, she blew a taunting kiss at me, which I was forced to replicate before turning to leave the room, swinging my bag over my shoulder. There was a few seconds where I couldn't see anything and my vision was dark. Then a brightly lit white room flashed into focus. I was disoriented, but worked out that I was looking at my bathroom from the other side of the mirror. I made out my smug, reflected self through the slightly smeared bathroom mirror, squeezing toothpaste onto my toothbrush hill and cleaning her teeth, leaning closer to the mirror on her side to spit into the sink. I felt myself copy her movements mechanically. My reflection turned to leave again. The second that her back was to me, I was plunged back into darkness. Total and complete darkness. I immediately realized that I was able to move of my own accord again and begun to spin around, arms flailing to grab the empty blackness. There was nothing. Well, almost nothing. I could see shapeless obsidian figures in the corners of my vision that seemed to glint and shine just outside of my view, but as soon as I turned to see them, they were gone. I could hear snatches of sounds like rushing water and distant voices from very far away. I had no concept of the passing of time. 
I stumbled aimlessly into the never-ending darkness, changing direction, sometimes fruitlessly running for a time, twice falling on my hands and knees, feeling the smooth surface of the ground. But I couldn't see it. But it felt cold and smooth. <sighs> like a mirror. More disturbingly still, I saw snatches of my reflection that would flash before my eyes. A blurry shape in a car wing mirror while walking to school. A worm's eye reflection of her from what I can only guess was a puddle. A circular framed image of my reflection laughing at the glass of someone's watch. <sighs> and so on. When I saw these images, it was like the metallic impulses in my body jumped to attention, obediently moving in perfect replicas of my reflection. But these were just glimpses of the day I should have been living. What I perceived to be a couple of hours of this had passed when I felt my face pulled into a sweet smile. My hands folded in my lap and my knees crossed. I saw my reflected self doing the same through black-tinted glass that swam into vision before my eyes. Oh shoot, I forgot. She was sitting for the school photo. Say cheese, said a distant echo of a man's voice. Cheese, <laughs> said the high, silly, affected voice of my reflection with a syrupy little giggle. Ugh. A couple more hours passed like this, confined to the suffocating darkness. If this hellish situation was truly real, and my reflection was living my life in my world, then surely my family would realize that this sick imitation was... It wasn't truly me. They'd realize it, wouldn't they? But a voice told me that even if they noticed something strange, they would never be able to guess what had truly happened. Am I gonna be stuck here forever? The next time I clearly saw my reflection was later that day, when the image of the artificially lit grubby school bathroom swam into focus. There she was. My malevolent, smiling double staring right at me, standing just where I had stood the previous morning. Could that really have been only 24 hours ago? She was alone, surveying me with an innocent expression. I got the photographer to show me my school picture. Looked really nice. I'm so glad, she said, tucking a strand of hair behind her ear. I did the same wanting with all my being to break the glass and strangle my simpering twin, but unable to move. Oh, look, she exclaimed sweetly, moving closer to the glass to examine the pimple between her eyebrows. <laughs> my pimple is practically gone. Hey guys, it's Giggles. Thank you so much for watching my video. Um, I just wanted to say if you're interested and want to make a donation, I have a coffee page. And I also have a spreadsheet where I'm selling merch in the form of t-shirts. Both links are in the description and I'd really appreciate if you guys check those out. If you enjoyed the story, please show the author some love, leave a like and a comment, subscribe, etc, etc. And also I would love to know how I can be praying for you. So if you've got a prayer request, big or small, please let me know. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.